back, everyone. Glad to have you here today on our Total Wellness Tuesday episode, where we are going over the nine big benefits of vitamin B6. For me, this is a very important episode, and that's because vitamin B6 was one of the nutrients that I was very deficient in before I met my mentor, Dr. Pete. She was one of the practitioners that I spoke with that really went beyond the vitamin B12, the folate that we all hear about. So when you think about B vitamins, you're probably thinking about you're probably thinking about folate, vitamin B9, although a lot of people don't know that it's vitamin B9. They just call it folate or folic acid. And a lot of people think about vitamin B12, which is cobalamin or methylcobalamin in the ideal form. So when we're talking about B6, though, it almost always gets brushed over. And there's a B1, a B2, a B3. But vitamin B6 is one of the most important vitamins that's almost never spoken about. And that's because I'm going to go over the nine reasons, the nine functions of the body that you absolutely can't be deficient in it. And one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this up today is if you run a candida metabolic and vitamins test, it's a simple at-home urine test, test, we can link it up below. It is the number one vitamin that we see low in the test. I want to repeat that. The number one vitamin that we see low on a candida metabolic and vitamins test, a simple at-home urine test that looks at your gut function, your methylation function, your energy function, your detox function, and the vitamins in your body, really important test. It actually shows how much is being utilized and B6 always seems to be the lowest. And, and that's for the majority of people. Now, I'll, I'll tell you how to fix that for sure with all different foods and vitamins, et cetera. As, as you can tell, it's probably gonna be B6, but there's a reason why. So one of the reasons why I was originally told about vitamin B6 with my mentor was that I had debilitating fatigue and inflammatory-based issues. And they led to a host of immune issues inside my body. I just simply couldn't recover from one illness to the next. And that was essentially my life for a full decade. I had diagnosed Addison's disease, myalgic encephalomyelitis. I had mast cell activation syndrome. It's called mastocytosis. Uh, I had beginning stages of rheumatoid arthritis, beginning stages of type 2 diabetes. I had fibromyalgia. I had insomnia. I had wild blood sugar dysregulation and a really um, impaired immune system. So when you're looking at all of those things, you have to understand is they're all different types of diseases. And if you're watching this on video, you see the air quotes go up. And the reason is that, uh, well, they're all diagnosed differently. The problem is they have many of the same underlying root causes. And part of it, again, this was not a cure-all, but one of it is that I was drastically deficient in vitamin B6. And once my mentor heard that rheumatoid arthritis ran in my family, as you're about to see in the research that I share with you, she said, you know, you really need to be testing uh, for your vitamin B6 and most likely get on vitamin B6. I was already on B12, but it wasn't the game changer. B6, again, not a panacea, but it was phenomenal in helping my overall health. So let's start to go through those big benefits right now. And again, clinically, I see it low on many of the candida metabolic and vitamins test. And then that's from a clinical perspective. And then from a science research perspective, I'm gonna be giving you nine reasons why if you're not using B12, B6, sorry, B6 in your nutritional supplement repertoire, I really believe that you may need to be doing so. But honestly, it's super easy to get and I'll share with you exactly how to do it after I give you the dosages, the exact dosages mentioned in science because everything we do is really based on the research. So really important, again, nothing wrong with folate, nothing wrong with B12, you definitely Definitely need them, but don't overlook B6 if you're dealing with these nine specific issues. The first one is this, mood. This is the biggest factor that I see people overlook. So when I'm looking again at that same lab, the candida metabolic and vitamins test, we look at dopamine, we look at norepinephrine, we look at serotonin, we look at the markers for those, the metabolites, they actually end metabolites. And you'll find that a lot of people are lower on their serotonin metabolite. Why is that? Well, believe it or not, one of the reasons why people have lower mood, okay, one of the reasons why people can't sleep well is because of a lack of serotonin. Now, you might say, well, why a lack of serotonin? Well, serotonin, predominantly made in the gut. Neurotransmitter, predominantly made in the gut. If you have gut issues, if you have inflammatory gut issues, you could be impaired in terms of mood and sleep because it's made in the gut. And if your gut's inflamed, you may not be making enough serotonin. Interesting, though. Serotonin 
leads to melatonin, which helps with deep sleep. Now, another thing though, serotonin and melatonin are actually not metabolized. They're not able to be used unless you have vitamin B6. Why? Vitamin B6 inside of your body is very interesting. It acts as an enzyme or a converter in many cases that we're gonna be talking about here today. And that's why it's overlooked because if you're in a low mood, you, you're probably looking for serotonin. And if you can't sleep, well, you might be looking for melatonin. But the truth is, you might be missing something that's upstream, which is vitamin B6, right? So if you're, so let's, for example, let's take tryptophan just as an example, okay? So in order to make serotonin, you need to be eating foods higher in tryptophan typically, okay? And then you need to have good gut function. But tryptophan is not gonna be converted to serotonin without vitamin B6. And you're not going to convert serotonin to melatonin without the B6 to make serotonin. So do you see how things happen upstream and then they flow downstream to what you want? So I'm telling you right now, B6 was a game changer for me in terms of sleep, which then of course helped with recovery, which then helped with inflammation, which helped with fatigue. So that's why it's all part of the overall process. That's why there's always a reason why. I tell you, I tell you all the time, and I really mean this, that anything anyone is dealing with, there is an underlying root cause. Typically there's multiple, you're able to figure it out, and then you're able to rebalance those uh, underlying root causes. So let me just give you a little stat here. A study with 250 older adults found that deficient blood levels of vitamin B6 doubled the likelihood of depression depression. It doubled the likelihood of depression for low vitamin B6. All right. I have to give my disclaimer here in the podcast. We are not giving any medical advice here today. We're not treating any disease. We're not diagnosing any disease or providing any medical-based cures. We're helping you get to the underlying root causes where the body then is able to heal itself. That is what we do here on the show. All right. Uh, big benefit number two, it helps with PMS. We work with a lot of women in our practice that are dealing with symptoms of, let's say, estrogen dominance about five to seven days before their menstrual cycle begins. They could have bloating, they could have cramping, they might be low mood, they might be irritable, they might have difficulty sleeping, they might be retaining water weight. Well, when you take vitamin B6, this study found that just 50 milligrams of vitamin B6, along with 200 milligrams of magnesium per day, significantly reduced PMF symptoms, including mood swings, irritability, anxiety, over the course of the menstrual cycle. So you don't just take it the five to seven days before where you might get PMS, but you actually take it for your entire menstrual cycle. So this was 50 milligrams of B6, along with 200 milligrams of magnesium daily. Keep that in mind as we're going through these studies. All right, big benefit number three is it helps with anemia. You would never think that vitamin B6 helps with anemia. I mean, really, when you look at it, like, okay, well, what's causing anemia? Is it B12? Is it copper? Is it iron? Is it an autoimmune issue? Well, what does B6 do? B6 actually helps utilize, metabolize, get oxygen into the cell using iron or B12 or copper, all of them that are needed. Vitamin C is needed in that as well. Magnesium, calcium, zinc, super important. So a study found that taking 75 milligrams of vitamin B6 during this, this one study was pregnancy. Uh, during pregnancy, decreased symptoms of anemia in 56 pregnant women who were unresponsive to treatment with iron. So when iron is not working to help with anemia, you may want to add the helpers, the cofactors such as your B vitamins, and that includes vitamin B6. This study was 75 milligrams. Keep in mind all of the different milligrams we're going over here today. I will sum it up at the end. All right, big benefit number four is nausea, especially nausea during pregnancy as well. Why does this help? Well, you know, I've, I've mentioned before, ginger is for sure the go-to. Ginger is phenomenal for nausea, uh, morning sickness, and pregnancy as well. And, and I'll, I'll give you some of this uh, stats too. But a three-month study in 60 uh, premenopausal women found that taking, uh, sorry about that, let's, let's recalibrate this uh, here as well. A three-month study, 342 uh, women in their first trimester of pregnancy, it actually went for four months, found that taking a daily supplement of 30 milligrams of B6 significantly reduced feelings of nausea just after five days compared to the placebo. So there we go, placebo-controlled study, 342 women, technically 17-week study, 
found that just 30 milligrams helped reduce nausea during that first trimester, which is typically when women are going to feel the most uh, and it's not always morning sickness, right? Because we, women know that that nausea could come in the evening or any time of the day as well. All right, number five is it helps with an aging brain. Vitamin B6, and I haven't even mentioned yet, the typical name is paradoxin. The type that I like, I like a few different types for absorption, but usually P5P is what you'll see it called, or paradoxal 5-phosphate or paradoxin 5-phosphate. Okay, so it helps with the AG brain. One study in 156 adults with high homocysteine levels and mild cognitive impairment found that taking high doses of vitamin B6, B12, and folate, which is vitamin B9, decreased homocysteine and reduced wasting in some regions of the brain that are vulnerable to Alzheimer's. I want to state this, though. Vitamin B6 is not enough to prevent or stave off Alzheimer's, right? Or even, I would say, to stabilize. I have a series on Alzheimer's that I would like to link up here today on the show. So if you head over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1971, head on over to, to stephencabral.com forward slash 1971, and I will link up the lab test that I've been talking about to test for your B6 with a simple urine test for yourself and for your kids. Um, I can't link up any nutritional supplements or B6, but I'll talk about that towards the end of the show where you can find it as well. And also at 1971, I will link up the shows on Alzheimer's. All right. It's a three part series. Okay. Uh, on how to, uh, test for Alzheimer's and then also how to really, stop Alzheimer's in its tracks. Again, we're not treating disease, we're helping the underlying root causes. All right, number six is this, and this goes hand in hand with an aging brain and Alzheimer's, they're hand in hand. So vitamin B6 can help with lowering homocysteine levels, which then again helps with the aging brain, but it also helps with the cardiovascular system, so heart attacks. So research, research shows that people with low blood levels of vitamin B6 have almost double the risk of getting heart disease compared with those of higher B6 levels. A, random, a randomized controlled trial in 158 healthy adults who had siblings with heart disease divided participants into two groups, one that received 250 milligrams of B6 and 5 milligrams of folic acid every day for two years and another that received the placebo. And the study goes on to say that those who received the 250 milligrams of B6 and 5 milligrams of folate had far, far less chance for heart disease. And again, all these studies will be linked up as well. So if you want the actual studies, um, so this study was called Effective Homocysteine Lowering Treatment with Folic Acid Plus B6 on Progression of Subclinical Atherosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries for heart disease. So I'm going to put that all in there uh, for you. And again, you can dive deep uh, if you'd like to on that specifically. But again, the, this is all scientific-based research. All right, number seven, the seventh big benefit out of nine is that it may help with cancer and prevent certain types of cancer. So a review of 12 individual studies, all peer-reviewed, found that both adequate dietary intake and blood levels of B6 were associated with lower levels of colorectal cancer. Colon cancer is one of the most um, deadly forms of cancer in the world. Individuals with highest levels of B6 had an almost 50% lower risk of developing this type of cancer. So half the risk, 50% lower chance of developing colorectal cancer. Um, and another one that may go along with cancer is that, because I was debating on whether this should be its own benefit or not, but vitamin B6 actually helps with polyunsaturated fatty acid metabolism. So all these people worried about taking in polyunsaturated fats, I get it, you do not want oxidized polyunsaturated fats. However, it seems that those people with adequate levels of vitamin B6 who take in polyunsaturated fats do not have the same oxidative damage from taking in polyunsaturated fats. That's why, remember, when people are telling you things online like never eat this, never eat that because that's polyunsaturated fats, there are levels to this. 
right? There are levels to this, which is why I do, again, I really hope that you're tuning in every day to the Cabral concept so we can dissect all those different levels because really health is not just black and white, this or that. There are levels to it that we have to understand. And again, I'll link up all these studies. All right, number eight is it may help with autoimmune issues such as rheumatoid arthritis. Why? Because vitamin B6, if you haven't seen yet, it helps with inflammation. It helps modulate healthy levels of inflammation. So a study in 43 adults with rheumatoid arthritis found that uh, those that took five milligrams of folic acid um, or uh, and 100 milligrams of B6, sorry, this is the study. 43 adults with rheumatoid arthritis that took 5 milligrams of folic acid alone or 100 milligrams of B6 with 5 milligrams of folic acid daily showed that those who received the B6 had significantly lower levels of pro-inflammatory molecules, things cytokines, after 12 weeks, which means folic acid alone, folate alone, methylfolate alone does not work as well as those that take it with vitamin B6. And, and again, B6 helped the, with the inflammation. All right, one more before I wrap it up. Vitamin B6 helps better control healthy levels of blood sugar. Patients in this study that were treated with vitamin B6, paradoxin, 100 milligrams per day for 14 days by mouth, uh, after which the paradoxin deficiency disappeared, which means they brought up their B6 levels after 14 days. They improved their overall glucose tolerance response considerably. That means clinically significant benefit to better stabilizing blood sugar just by taking vitamin B6 because it helps better utilize your carbohydrates. So right now, again, I'm telling you right now, vitamin B6, and I've said it before, if you go back a couple of years ago on the podcast, the most overrated of the B vitamins. I should say the most underrated of the B vitamins, excuse me, the most underrated, probably the most overrated would be B12 because people look at it as a panacea. B12, super important. You know, if you're dealing with chronic fatigue, it's not going to get rid of your chronic fatigue. It can help if you're deficient uh, and it helps with inflammation and homocysteine and so many other things. So you should take it. But I'm telling you right now, the most underrated is B6. Okay, so now I'd like to go over exactly how to get all of the benefits of vitamin B6 so that you can enjoy the healthier cardiovascular, the healthier mindset and mood, more energy, better stabilized blood sugar, and all the rest. So again, I've been using this myself for, well, over 15 years now. I've been using it in my clinical practice for over a decade. 90% of the people in our practice do exactly this. So I just want to share it with you right now because it's super simple. So again, 90% of the people in our practice use the daily nutritional support shake first thing in the morning with breakfast. They can make a smoothie out of it. They can just mix it with some nut milk. They however they want to use it. But what they're doing is they're getting in 25 milligrams of all of their B vitamins, but they're also getting 25 milligrams of that B6. Super simple, easy to do, highly recommend that, right? So that's getting you that big dosage right away in the morning. But then if you want to get the 50 to 100 milligrams, which recommended per day, and you want more energy, you want better mood, you want better healthy levels of uh, inflammation and blood sugar, my recommended uh, next part is get it throughout the day. So you do your daily nutritional, nutritional support in the morning, and then what you do is you take your activated B-complex. Activated B-complex is one capsule at lunch, another capsule at dinner. So now you're getting 25 milligrams at breakfast, 25 milligrams at lunch, 25 milligrams at dinner super easy to do, and now you're getting the clinical dosage, right? The clinical dosage is basically up to 100 milligrams per day. I don't recommend you go over 100 milligrams per day unless you're working with a qualified healthcare practitioner. Really, really important. Um, you saw in the studies that they go up to 250 milligrams, but just safe dosage that I've seen for most people in my practice. Again, always check with your medical doctor if you have questions, but I've always used myself between 50 and 100 milligrams. When I met with my mentor, Dr. Pete, I was already taking a good multi. It was about 25 milligrams. Um, she upped me 50 more milligrams per day, which is, again, what I'm recommending to you. Uh, but don't just take it as vitamin B6. So what you want to do is the activated B complex has all the B vitamins. They always work better as a family. That's how they are meant to get them in your body like you do through food. So vitamin B1, you've got your thiamine. Vitamin B2, you've got your riboflavin. Vitamin B3, you've got your niacin. And they go all the way through. So you really want to take them as a family. And then in addition, of course, you get your B12, your folate, all of those. But you're getting your B6. So again, daily nutritional support at breakfast, 
one activated B complex capsule at lunch, another activated B at dinner, and there you have it, 75 milligrams per day. Let me know how it works for you. Of course, I would love to hear from you. Uh, I will link up everything that I can at stephencabral.com forward slash 1971, which will be a lot of the studies and the lab tests. I can't, I can't link up the products, but the products you can all find at equa.life. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E. And you can just search daily nutritional support, comes in vanilla or chocolate, uh, and then activated B complex. So there you have it. Take care, everyone. And of course, please do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. 